Welcome Los Angeles and everyone online. It's a crazy time, but thanks so much for having me here. And today I'm going to talk about uh, Thanos CNCF project. And the title is highly available, pluggable, long-term storage metric for everyone. It's one of my most longest title ever for a talk. Uh, really excited to talk about this. First of all, a little bit about myself. I'm from the Netherlands or Holland, and I'm a buzzword engineer. Basically, I do everything that I like, uh, which really depends on the moment. So this can be SRE or DevOps or at the moment observability. And I do this at uh, full stack. I really like open source software and especially anything related to Kubernetes. And on the side, I do a little bit of hacking, for example, HackerOne. Uh, these are just things that I really like to enjoy uh, in my spare time, besides working with wood. Uh, I really love to create things. So now we got the basic covered. <laughs> Let's get started with our talk. And we have to start with Prometheus first. I want to give you a little introduction. Since this is a talk for everyone, I want to give you this introduction about Prometheus. Perhaps you have heard of it. Perhaps you are using it. I personally really love this, this project. It's, it's alive for uh, quite a while. It's heavily used, uh, especially also on Kubernetes. But what is it that it does? Well, Prometheus is a key player for this part. This is an HTTP page and it's serving metrics. It's just displaying text in a metric format. And for example, this page is actually displaying metrics about an HTTP server. For example, about the request duration, but also about uh, how many requests we had in total and what was the code, the HTTP code that was for a given request and what are the counters for this. And for example, for an HTTP web server, this is pretty nice information to have because you can see, um, for example, how many 500 errors do I have? And this is really nice, but we want to go from such a page as this towards something like this. And this is Grafana and it's, it's a visualization tool. And what you can see here are different graphs, but these graphs are, are metrics plotted over time. And this is really nice but we can also do different things such as alert. And this is an example of an alert that we have created in, with, with Prometheus. And this is an alert for a high load. So if the, the node load one is above uh, 0.5, um, well, it runs into a, a firing state. So it, we can get a notification that something with a metric happened and it passes some threshold and we get an alert. So it's important to get a top-down view of Prometheus as it's, well, it's doing quite a lot of things, but the things that you're doing is it's doing really well. So in the middle, we have the Prometheus server and we can do the retrieval of those metric pages. So basically that's the retrieval part. We are pulling metrics from those metric endpoints. And we can do this in a certain interval, which is just the, the scraping interval. But how do we discover these targets? Well, that can be done via multiple methods. If you check out the Prometheus website, you have all kinds of service discovery methods. I've listed two, uh, which is the Kubernetes service discovery and the file service discovery. And basically what we often do with the file discovery are static targets. So we input a host, which is just a static target and Prometheus will uh, try to scrape that endpoint. With Kubernetes, we can use discovery via the Kubernetes API server, which is really neat because we can just run our services and let the API server do everything and let Prometheus discover 
every metric part that we have. And this makes it really, really easy to automatically discover our scraping targets. So that is the retrieval part. But um, you can see in the next part is the TSDB, which is the da database, the time series database. And it's storing its data on the node, on basically a generic volume. Then we also have this HTTP server, and well, this allows for PromQL, which is the query language for Prometheus, to um, well, allow you to query your metrics over time. And Prometheus does have um, its web user interface, which is also really nice, um, but perhaps a more common user interface is Grafana, which is really nice for the visualization and you can do so much more with Grafana, but that's out of scope for right now. We also have this alert manager, which you can see on the top right. And well, basically what we can do is creating alerts and certain thresholds. And if a certain metric over time hits a certain threshold, we can send in an alert. So Prometheus is really awesome at doing all these kinds of things but perhaps it's just lacking a few features. For example, as you can see, the TSDB is storing its data on the node itself, on disk, or on a volume, depending on if you run on Kubernetes, which is fine if you have a few servers that you're scraping and you have a data retention of 30 days. That, that, that works perfectly because Prometheus um, is able to scrape a lot of targets and is able to well, retain a lot of data. But the retention period, I haven't seen, for example, a retention period of two years for um, 10,000 of servers in one single Prometheus. That can be quite tough for Prometheus. It wasn't built for a, a very long retention period. So let's question Prometheus for a little bit. I don't want to uh, say anything bad about Prometheus because I really love Prometheus and so should you. But there are a few limitations. For example, I have a single node with Prometheus on it. I have a second node with four services on it. And well, Prometheus have discovered my four services and it's all running well, it's scraping my four services and I can query the data. But what if node one crashes? Well, th this might pose a problem, uh, depending on your use case, of course. But at the moment, it isn't scraping my four services anymore. And I also don't have an opportunity to query my data from the period that Prometheus was running. And Obviously, uh, if you are known to Kubernetes, we can just add replicas. We can just add another Prometheus, which is what we can do. So here we have two nodes, and both nodes are running Prometheus. So this removes this, the single um, point of failure. And if something happens to one Prometheus, that's fine because we still have the other Prometheus replication. If we have this use case, we still have node two, it's still scraping service three and four, and we can still query our data. We can also still query our data from the period that um, node one was uh, still alive uh, because node two still has this data. Both Prometheuses are both scraping all our targets, which allows us for one Prometheus to go offline. There is just a little downside to this because both nodes have the same time series. But as we have discussed, a Prometheus will scrape on a certain interval. And this isn't a fixed interval in time. So it isn't scraping at 00.00. .00. It's just scraping every 15 seconds. And it really depends per Prometheus on when it is scraping it. So it could be the case that both Prometheuses have the same raw time series data. But the time series would most likely be 
the same. However, the samples would be different to the different scraping times. Also, the problem is, is that, for example, one node goes offline, um, we are missing the data on that Prometheus. And for example, we implement a load balancer. So our queries are going to either node one or node two, and this is working just perfectly. But one, once node one went offline, we are missing data. So if our query hits node one, we still have this gap in our data. And this is fine for, for example, alert manager, because alert manager is aware of this behavior and it can just filter and deduplicate the data. But if you're talking about making queries with, for example, Grafana and making dashboards, it could be that if you just hit the refresh button, you hit the Prometheus that was offline for five minutes and you have a gap in your data. If you might refresh and you don't have a sticky session on your load balancer, you, you might hit the other Prometheus and you don't have the gap anymore. But you might also see different samples because it, they can be different due to the scraping times. And let's talk about a unified view. Let's say I have five Kubernetes clusters and I want just a single view for all my Prometheus. Well, can we solve this natively? And the answer here is a typical engineer question. <laughs> yes and no, we can, but perhaps not perfectly. So one way to do this is via one single Prometheus instance, perhaps with replication. And we can use the Kubernetes um, service discovery config. And as you can see here, there is a definition for an API server. And by default, it's assuming it's running in its own cluster. But we can also add another configuration and basically scrape a remote cluster. There are a few downsides to this. Well, first of all, you need to have access to your external cluster because it is gathering the information about your services via the API server. So you will need to have access to your other server. And this guy, this might be just a little bit annoying for you. Perhaps an other solution, which I personally don't recommend is using federation. So federation is just a native solution within Prometheus, which allows you to um, scrape different Prometheus servers. So what we could do is implement a, a, a Prometheus server on your external cluster and just expose your Prometheus and let it be scraped by a central cluster. This works, but I wouldn't recommend because it requires a lot of data to be scraped. There can be massive amounts of metrics on your Kubernetes cluster. And if this grows, this solution doesn't scale that well. Another solution, which I just added for completion, is expose your metric endpoints in another cluster. So let's say you only have one endpoint, one metric endpoint in the external cluster. You could add an ingress in front of that and just let it expose and add that as a static target to your central cluster. Uh, to be honest, this solution is meh. <laughs> I wouldn't know why you want to do this, but it is a possibility. I normally assume that you want to have all your metrics um, well gathered from your clusters and not just one single point. But if this is your use case, you could do this and just define your target as a static target. So I've talked a little bit about some form of limitations in Prometheus, but it does make Prometheus bad or anything. In fact, we actually really love Prometheus. And this is where the talk of Thanos is about, about extending Prometheus because we like Prometheus. And there's a lot of love between our communities. And yeah, let's get started about talking about Thanos. First of all, our community. I think we are really proud about everyone involved in the, in the Thanos community. We are aware fully open source from the start. And well, it's been a few years. We started in November in 2017, myself not included. I just 
okay, on later. Um, yeah, and we are a CNCF incubating project. And personally, for myself, this is really important. As I said, I really love open source, but I guess it's perhaps even more important about what company or foundation is behind an open source project. And this is why I love the CNCF. Um, well, we have transparent governance. Um, we do maximum of two votes per company involved in the project. And I mean, this is really important for an open source project to maintain a healthy state. And I really like that. We're also hitting almost the 10,000 GitHub stars, which would be uh, another milestone for this project. And we have so many contributors and Slack users are really active. And I really love the vibes on our Slack. So please feel welcome to join us on CNCF Slack on Thanos channel. Uh, happy to see you there. And feel free to ask questions there. Don't always take my only word for it. We have numerous companies running towns in production to ensure they have a reliable and scalable monitoring platform. I'm also really, uh, really happy that those companies are willing to add themselves to the adoption page um, on our GitHub. And also, if you are listening right now and you're using Thanos, uh, please feel free to add yourself to the adopter list. Um, if you are unsure on how to do that, just give me a message or find us on Slack. I'm happy to help you here. And again, thanks for everyone involved in this project. So let's get started about the features of Thanos. So I guess one of the main things is the global query view. So we can have a multiple clusters with Prometheus and we can add them all to a unified way to query them all which is really awesome. And I will get back to on how this works and how it would look like. But also unlimited retention. And perhaps this is weird. I mean, you can have unlimited retention for everything, but what Thanos incorporates is storing the data on the object store. So it's really cheap and efficient and it scales. And that makes it the unlimited retention. And Thanos is also Prometheus compatible. A, a lot of our source code is basically part of Prometheus itself. We use the same API for queries and from QL, and basically it's a plug and play compatibility. Another cool feature is the down sampling. Let's say we have metrics for a two year retention. If I'm going to well, display this in a nice visualization chart in Grafana. I'm not going to plot every 30 seconds on a two year timeline. This will be a, a, a few lesser plots. And we can just downsample this data to make really efficient long term uh, queries for yourself, which really speeds up the process. Tons consists of uh, multiple components. And well, the four core components that I'm going to cover in this talk is the sidecar, the query component, the store, and the compactor components. There are more components, but just for the sake of this, I'm just going through the, this, these four components as they are the most important and provides the most value. So the, the sidecar can just be hooked next to Prometheus, which makes it really plug and play. Uh, we can just add that as a sidecar. It's optionally capable of uploading your metrics to the object store. We don't need to use this. You don't have to use the object store or long-term metrics. If you just want to use Thanos for a unified way to query all your Prometheuses, that's fine as well. And the sidecar enables the querier to actually query our data. And as discussed, well, the query is able to see every component. So our stores and other sidecars, every component implements this store API. And the query component can just discover these targets and allows you to query on whatever component of tunnels that you want. And I will go into a little bit more details later on about this. 
And we have this compactor. And the compactor is basically a, a procedure um, which Prometheus hasn't done yet. Because we are storing our data to the object store, Prometheus isn't compacting our data yet. And this is where the compactor comes in. And the compactor comp um, component allows you to compact the data, which is more efficient. It's also responsible for downsampling our data for the longer term metrics, which speeds up things very well. We also have the store component. And the, the core feature of the store component is to act as an API gateway to our object store. And this store component allows us to query our historical data in this object store. So this is an example of a typical highly available setup, uh, which incorporates Thanos. So as you can see, I have multiple clusters and each cluster is running on Prometheus. And each Prometheus has a sidecar with Thanos sidecar. We also have a generic monitoring cluster and we have two query components. And these are stateless and you can run multiple replicas of this. And we have Grafana, which um, hooks into the query component. So we are querying via Grafana to the query component, and the query components are doing their queries to all our sidecars. And as you can see, cluster two has multiple replicas. And the great part of this is that the query component does deduplication on the fly. So even if in cluster two, one load goes down or Prometheus goes down, we can still have our data. And well, when, for example, the Prometheus is back online, we used to have this gap in our data. If we, for example, hit exactly that Prometheus that was offline for a certain amount of time, well, the query components just prevents that as it does the duplication of the data. So you always have the same unified way to displace your data. And we can extend this further to allow the sidecar to upload the data to the object store. This is not entirely enough. This is the first step. So it will upload the data. And we can add the store component to actually allow us to query this object store. But we can do a lot of different things. As you can see here, we have one cluster with only a sidecar, and we have another cluster with a query component and store component and the sidecar. And this works just as well. So in a monitoring cluster, we have a unified way to query all our clusters, but we only have one cluster with a long-term metrics. And this works just fine. And this is really awesome. And we can go just further. Um, we can add another Grafana with multiple query components on our cluster one. And this might be really useful if you are working with different teams um, wanting their own Grafana instance. That's possible. We can just have this one cluster at the Grafana at the query components. And we still have our monitoring cluster in which we can see all our clusters. And we can just continue doing this. We can, well, for example, have a team that has two clusters. And you want to give them their own Grafana instance. And now, if you are in the Grafana on cluster one, you are able to query with the unified view a cluster one and cluster two. But we still have this monitoring cluster in which we can see everything. For example, if you have a third cluster. And we can go basically bananas. This is a draft that I made a while ago and I just figured to include this. This is just having various components and as you can see, everything is just chainable, pluggable, and you don't have to go into details of this graph. What I'm trying to say with this is that it's really well to just plug and play, to make changes, to switch things up, and to move things through various pipelines, basically. And this makes it really robust. And you might say, how do I get started? 
Well, first of all, please check out our website. Um, I will upload uh, these slides and you can check all the links for yourself. But basically, our tunnel's website has lots of information. And again, if you are missing anything, please create an issue or a pull request. Uh, happy to improve this. I also want to give a shout out to the Prometheus operator, which is really awesome to have like a unified way to set up your Prometheuses. And it also allows you to incorporate tunnel sidecar uh, with the Prometheus operator. There's also the, the cube tunnels uh, Elm chart. I personally uh, haven't used it, but uh, I'm aware that a lot of people are using it. So I will just include it. And there are also community charts, which is just a search. And there are multiple of those. And I'm also really proud to have a Katakoda, uh, which is basically a, a course of tunnels. And there are seven lessons which get you started with using Prometheus and tunnels. And I really would recommend you to try out the coder uh, if you think this talk was really nice. Please do check it out. And we also have more. So we have our Slack. Uh, it's on the CNCF Slack, and we have our channels there. Uh, feel free to join. And we also have questions and discussions on our GitHub, and obviously our GitHub in general for pull requests and issues. And again, check out our website. And I would like to thank you all and our community, everyone involved in Tunnels and the CNCF. And thanks so much for having me here. I hope everyone uh, had a great time and still enjoys other talks. And hopefully next year we can see all each other in real life. Really looking forward to that. Thank you.